Hey guys, welcome into Fantasy Football Academy 2020. As always, I am the Dean, your host. Look, you guys know what time it is. My boys won, so I'm rocking the hoodie. You know I'd be rocking the hoodie though, even though they even if they didn't win, but especially on days that they won. Uh, look, if you're in the NFC East, it's all jumbled up, kind of like our league of record. There's a whole bunch of players that are still in the playoff hunt. So if this is any year where fantasy mimics reality or reality mimics fantasy, however you want to look at it, this is the year. So had a couple had a key injury last night during the games, during the Washington game, as a matter of fact, Joe Burrow out for the year. What does this mean for fantasy? This means that T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, um, possibly A.J. Green, if uh, you were to count on him for anything, pretty much done. Uh, I don't know who, who they're going to have as the backup in Cincinnati moving forward, but I know he's not going to be as good as Joe Burrow was. Uh, sad to see. So thoughts and prayers go out to Joe Burrow and his family uh, for speed recovery. And as he said, see you next year, torn ACL out for the year. So going forward, if you are one of these teams and I'm, this show, I'm trying to get you ready for the playoff run, trying to get you ready for the waivers that are coming up Tuesday. Yes, I know we still have a game tonight. And if you're looking for the Bucks or the Chargers, I'm sorry, the Rams to get you in, if you're looking for golf, if you're looking for Brady, Evans, Godwin, Brown, um, Gronk, uh, Rojo, uh, if you're looking on the flip side, if you're looking for Woods or Cup or Reynolds, Higby, Everett, uh, any of the litany of running backs that the Rams are going to roll out, good luck. Uh, some of you, your game's already over, like mine. Yes, the wife beat me again, but just goes to show you that she listens to me. So if that's any, uh, any endorsement for the brand here at, at the Academy, I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, a lot of the guys in, in my league of record who listened to me this week won. Uh, unfortunately, my boy D Money was not one of them. Uh, D just ran into a buzzsaw that is uh, Slutty Mutts. He and I go up against each other next week. So that will be the game of the week. Okay. Um, so moving forward, if you're looking for players to plug in, if you're, look, nobody's on a buy in this coming week. So week 12, there are no buys. However, week 13, there is Tampa and the Panthers. So if you're looking for Mike Davis, Robbie Anderson, any of those, uh, those guys on Carolina, you're out of luck. Uh, if you're looking at Tampa Bay, they're done as well. So as far as the regular season for, uh, for those teams, you've got one more week. So remember, there's week 12 and week 13. The majority of platforms start week 14 through 16 for the playoffs. If you're playing in week 17, get out next year, okay? Remember, I told you at the beginning of the season, make sure that you know when your championship is, and if it's week 17, you need to get out. So this is why there's going to be a lot of a lot of teams that are going to lock up playoff spots and are going to sit their starters. So those guys that help get you where you're at, they're not going to be available. Uh, a couple of guys who probably will be available, I'm gonna, we're going to start at quarterback, and run down. Uh, we're gonna do a little screen share. And when we do a screen share, you guys know what time it is. It's time to plug my sponsors. So I would like to take a second with the holiday season right around the corner. If you're looking for a great pie, remember you need to go to, if you're in the Lafayette area, you need to go to Keller's Bakery at 627 Lafayette Street off the Youngsville Highway. Tell them the Dean sent you, get you two free cookies, okay? 
give me just a second and I'll pull up that list of, here we go. So they've got pies for the holidays. Um, here's the flavors, you ready? We've got chocolate, coconut, lemon meringue, apple, cherry, pineapple, pecan, and it's pecan, not pecan. If you order a pecan or a pecan, I'm going to tell you right now, you might not get it. Just kidding. Bill will know what you're talking about. Uh, sweet potato, pumpkin, coconut custard, nine inch and four inch. So look, if the family loves sweet potato, you don't like sweet potato pie. You want some, you want some, uh, some coconut custard. It's awesome. Get you a little four inch. They've got the four inch. They got the nine inch. Get down to Keller's. Tell them the Dean sent you. Get you two free cookies when you order your big pie for the family and a couple of small ones for yourself. Remember, they say it's better to give than to receive, but hey. You're giving a nine inch pie, why not receive a four for yourself? So head down to Keller's or you can find them on Facebook and order that way, okay? So let's get into quarterbacks for the rest of the regular season of fantasy football. So we're gonna look now, Daniel Jones was on a bye. So we're gonna check them out now. I did the last four weeks, why? Because if you do for a season, there's going to be a lot of guys on here that are either hurt, unavailable, or not where you want them to be. But in the last four weeks, we're going to look, scroll down here, Daniel Jones. We see he put up 24, 20, 14 against Washington. So, I mean, Washington's a good defense, uh, as Cincinnati found out last night. Uh, and 22 points against Philly. Now we look at the rest of his season for the regular season. We see Cincinnati, who is struggling on defense and passing. Seattle, who everyone can pass on. Then we get Arizona. And then Cleveland and Baltimore is kind of sketchy. So what we're looking at right now is we're looking for our players that can get us into the playoffs and then we'll rely on the players that we have to take us the rest of the way okay uh, there's going to be a couple of guys in here who have a very favorable playoff schedule but you need wins now if you need wins now or uh, if you need to stash and I'll tell you the difference okay uh, Daniel Jones is going to be one of those guys that you play right now if you're down if you're down a quarterback, this is not a guy that you want to ride into the fantasy playoffs. You see Arizona, Cleveland, and Baltimore. That can be kind of a, a tough a tough schedule uh, moving forward, okay? Cleveland's not a joke when it comes to defense. And Baltimore, even though they're getting hurt, can still get after the quarterback, okay? So Daniel Jones is going to be one. My next one. And let, we're going to go strictly QBs here. Now, you guys might be thinking, oh, hey, he's going to say Cam Newton. Let's take a look at Cam just so you can see why I'm not saying Cam. Now, we see the last four weeks, 18, 24, 18, 21. Okay. But here's the thing. He gets Arizona up next and then the Chargers. And then for the rest of the playoffs, he gets the Rams, the Dolphins, and then Buffalo. Now, I know that Miami kind of faltered a little bit against, uh, against uh, Denver yesterday. But doesn't mean that Miami's not still Miami. And that's going to be – those last two games are going to be divisional games. So – if you really want to hang your hat, and when I preach here, trust your gut. If you get a gut feeling moving forward about Cam Newton, you like that 365 that he threw with one touchdown, okay? It's against Houston. He's not going to be able to play Houston every week, okay? Against the Jets, the Jets, he threw for 274 and had two rushing touchdowns. 
Okay. Buffalo, he's going to get Buffalo up again, 174, and then he's 98, and then he's 157. That's weeks eight, seven, and six. I'm, look, if you get, like I said, if you guys are have a gut feeling about Cam, by all means, go for it. Have at it. I myself am laying off of Cam Newton. I'm not going to let one game dictate. He's going to have to show me. The only thing is, is that you're running out of time. So, who's my guy that I'm going to I'm going to bring up? I'm bringing up this guy right here, Philip Rivers. Moving forward, we look down here at his schedule. Extremely favorable fantasy schedule. After Tennessee, if you're good on week 12, if week 13, let's say that you have Brady or you're scrambling because you had Teddy B and you really don't have anybody else. Now, first of all, if you had Teddy B and he was your starter, sorry, because you might be out of the playoffs already. Um, but he's got Houston in week 13, the Raiders in week 14, and then Houston again. Pittsburgh is the only hiccup here in week 16. So if you've got a good matchup with the quarterback that you currently have, for week 16, but you're a little worried about the rest of his schedule, Phil Rivers is a guy that you can stash on your bench and you can put him in right now if you need some if you need some help, okay? The Tennessee game, eh, I'm a little worried about. Uh, he did throw for 300, and one, 300 uh, yards and a touchdown two weeks ago when they faced Tennessee prior to this. So we'll see how it pans out moving forward for this coming week. Now, last guy I'm going to bring up, and I cannot believe I'm doing this. Um, and you guys might be going, oh, it's going to be two. It's going to be Baker. Look, Baker hadn't thrown for anywhere near 300 yards all season. Tua got yanked against Denver. Okay. Nick Mullins, no, I'm not trusting Nick Mullins. Jay Gluten, no, I'm not trusting Jay Gluten either. Joey Flacco, yeah, that's good. No. That's right. Taysom Hill. I know I'm as shocked as you are at the performance that we saw on Sunday. But if you are a Michael Thomas owner, you were extremely pleasantly surprised at his 233 with 51 yards and two rushing touchdowns. Now, here's the thing. If you have Alvin Kamara... Are you really happy at seeing Taysom Hill behind center? Not particularly, because those two rushing touchdowns normally would have gone to Alvin Kamara, but it's Taysom Hill. Now we look at his rest of schedule. We see Denver, Atlanta, Philly, and Minnesota with KC in week 15. Now, KC's no joke. But we saw what David Carr did to him last night, okay? David Carr did not have a bad performance. KC is not used to the kind of type of quarterback that Taysom Hill is, okay? They might play something like that in practice when they're trying to mimic Patrick Mahomes. Now, I'm not saying that Taysom Hill is anywhere near the level of Patrick Mahomes, but he is in that style. He's in that mobile quarterback style, okay? Uh, Denver, I really don't see them giving too much of a problem. Now, it's going to be at Denver, but here's the thing, and this is going to be something that's going to be brought up. He played at BYU, okay? Brigham Young is in Utah. I mean, it's not too far from Colorado. So the altitude and the temperature that's going to be and we're talking about a late November game. So I'm not seeing any way that Taysom Hill is going to be affected by this. He grew up, he was in college, playing in BYU, bad weather. So I don't think whatever the weather is in Denver is going to matter to him. Um, and then we see at Atlanta and at Philly. Um, at Atlanta, they're going to be in a dome. Philly, again, weather, it's not going to be an issue. 
KC could be a little hiccup. And then Minnesota, look, Andy Dalton basically came right off of the bench, right back to where he started, wound up getting 31, putting up 31 points against this defense. It was just that the Cowboys defense either stiffened up or uh, Captain Kirk just ran out of juice. So, and that's actually going to be a Friday game. And that's something I want to bring up to you guys too, is that uh, later in the season, there's going to be uh, a little bit of a different schedule. So make sure that you're paying attention to it. So I do want to take a second and bring up the fact that we are in Thanksgiving weekend. That's right. Remember, if you want to reign supreme, over your competition, you need to pay attention to the little things. And having three games on Thanksgiving Day is its kind of a big thing, but it's one of those little nuances that if you're not paying attention, you're going to miss. So remember that if you have anybody on Dallas, Washington, Houston, Detroit, or Pittsburgh and Baltimore, I know, these I love these matchups. Houston, Detroit, I, I can probably snooze through. I'll probably take my little nap. But the Pittsburgh and Ravens, I'm down for that one. Interdivisional rival, that's going to be an absolute defensive slugfest. It's always – that's why they call this the black and blue division, guys. Okay, between Cincinnati, Cleveland, Baltimore, and, uh, and Pittsburgh, these guys just get after each other. Okay, I don't care what their records are. You take the records, you can throw them out. This is a defensive battle, okay? So make sure that you're you're making your roster adjustments and we'll remind you again on Wednesday when we do our show uh, for uh, start sets on Wednesday. We will go through and we'll make sure that we remind you about Thursday's games, okay? But I want to drive that home today. We're going to start early. So. Let's look at running backs, and this is going to be a real quick one because we look here, and I will show you right now. Top 25, horrible, okay? I don't want anything to do with Leonard Fournette, Boston Scott, Devontae Booker. The Gus bus was horrible last night. I think he got like six yards. Now, you might be asking, why, you know, Dean, why do you go through – the last four weeks. The last four weeks is showing me who's hot, who's not. Okay. Now I'm gonna look at Duke Johnson. I'm gonna show you real quick. Cause you guys might be going, oh well, hey, Duke Johnson, you know, David Johnson, David Johnson's hurt. So why not start Duke Johnson? This is why. You get after Detroit, you get Indy, Chicago, Indy again, and then Cincinnati. So Detroit if you need a win and you need help at running back, yes, you can go and plug in Duke Johnson. But after that, throw him out the window, okay? Because the, Houston is going to be so far behind in these other games for week 13, 14, and 15. The only thing that they're, they're going to need in fantasy is Sean Watson, Brandon Cooks, Will Fuller. Okay, that's it. Probably until week 16. So, if you want to stash him, but trust me, if anybody is picking up Duke Johnson for weeks 13, 14, and 15, you probably won't see them in the championship. So who's the guy, the only guy on here on this list that I'm excited about? It's not Phil Lindsay. I know he's been good through, you know, throughout the season, but he's only got 29 points in the last four weeks. Okay. So the only guy who's averaging 10 points a game over the last four weeks is DJ Dallas. Now, I'm going to put a little asterisk on this because this these matchups, he gets Philly, New York, the, and then the Jets. Week 15 and 16 is some really tough defenses. Washington is no joke when it comes to defense. And the Rams, we're about to see them on Monday Night Football. We've seen them before. They've been really sneaking up on people in the fantasy world and being kind of overlooked and disrespected. So I think the Rams in Washington are both going to give problems to Seattle. 
but these other three matchups early in the late in the regular season, early in the playoffs for Philly, the Giants, and the Jets. If you need running back help, DJ Dallas is a guy that you can plug in with the absence of Chris Carson and Carlos Hyde. Okay. Because as you see here, we had the return of Carlos Hyde here. Didn't get used too much, and that was but that was against the Rams. I'm telling you the Rams are no joke. His big game was against San Fran with 22 points, and he only had 41 yards. So the defense on Seattle is horrible. I don't care about Jamal Adams because he's been dinged up. And even when he's been there, he hasn't been that effective barring that one game. He had, I think he had one game where he really, really shined. Um, but DJ Dallas is the guy. Boston Scott, look, Miles Sanders is back. We're going to pull him up. If you think that Miles Sanders is going to get dinged up again, that's fine. But even with Miles Sanders out, Boston Scott only had two good games that you would even want him in. Okay. We see only eight points against Cleveland and with the return of Miles Sanders. He gets Seattle, Green Bay, New Orleans, Arizona, Dallas. I'm not excited about that, that lineup, and they are going to be way behind in these games, and they're going to have to throw the ball. And unfortunately, it's going to have to be Carson Wentz doing it. Um, Wentz has just been playing horrible. I think that there's something wrong with him because he is just not playing up to his standards. Outside of that, you see a lot of IR, a lot of question marks. Uh, if there's Dobbins, Edwards, and Ingram in this, I don't want anything to do with Baltimore backfield. And Adrian Peterson, only if Swift is still out, but he's he's only out because of a concussion. So he should clear a concussion protocol for the upcoming week. So let's flip over to wide receivers real, real quick. And we've only got a couple of guys on here as well. David Moore, he gets Philly, the Giants, and the Jets. Okay, as we talked about before, with DJ Dallas. Okay, so David Moore, wide receiver for Seattle. And I know what you're thinking, but Dean, they've already got Lockett and they've already got Metcalf. This is a stash guy, okay? You see the breakout that he had for week eight, okay? And then they used him rushing you know, against Buffalo for uh, week nine. As I said, very favorable playoff fantasy schedule. Uh, you get Philly, the Giants, and the Jets. If they can use this guy in multiple ways, they will. Uh, this is very much the blueprint for what uh, Kansas City does. So if you can put David Moore on your bench, if you need to plug in a wide receiver, if you're low because of uh, – if you got the Week 13 matchup coming – and he's going to have the Giants, and you need to, you know, plug somebody in because you lost Evans or you lost Antonio Brown, uh, you lost Chris Godwin. Uh, if you were still hanging on for Scotty Miller, he's gone too. Um, if you're missing Robbie Anderson, any of the uh, Carolina receivers, you're going to need some help. So why not plug him in? Uh, real quick, we'll take a look at Corey Davis. MVS, I've said it before, I'll say it again. He is a insurance policy. Lazard is supposed to be back and healthy. So we'll see. Now, we see really good production here. Uh, Corey Davis, I don't remember if he was not on the field or if he just wasn't used against Chicago. But we look at this lineup. He gets Indy, Cleveland. He doesn't get anything until Jacksonville, Detroit, and then Green Bay. So if you need help 
going if you already know that you're going to be in the playoffs, if you know that you're going to get there, take Corey Davis, throw him on your bench, stash him away in case one of your running backs go or yeah, one of your uh, receivers go down. Okay. Uh, he's used quite a bit as a run in a running back position. But remember that the Titans have a guy who's kind of good. His name's Derrick Henry. Um, so if Derrick, if they want to change the pace, yeah, that's fine. But we see, because we see here against Baltimore, they use him. Uh, I don't know if you guys watched the game, but Derrick Henry really didn't have anything until probably the second half. So. Uh, we do see 113 yards. So we see Corey Davis being used quite a bit. I think he did miss a, a pass, uh, wasn't thrown too well, if, I, if memory serves correct in this game. But Corey Davis is a guy that you can stash on your bench if you need wide receiver help, but only if you are going to already be in the playoffs. If you have your spot pretty much locked up, uh, then you can throw Corey Davis on it. Next up, we got Josh Reynolds. You might be saying, wait a minute, Dean, that's the Rams. The only guys there are Cup and Woods, right? Not necessarily. Let's scroll down here and we see we get decent production here lately. We've, we go back to week six, 13, 15. It was eight against Miami. Then they hit the buy and then they come back. And he gets 17 points for you against Seattle. Now, they've got Tampa Bay coming up on Monday night. And then he hit San Francisco, Arizona, New England, the Jets, and then Seattle again. Okay. Uh, and that's, again, because he faced in week 10. Um, but if you need some wide receiver help, <clears throat> you need a guy who has a good, favorable matchup coming up. Look, you can throw in an, on San Fran. <clears throat> pardon me. You can <clears throat> you can throw in New England. You can throw in the Giants, and you definitely can throw in Seattle. So, if they're gonna lock, try to lock down Woods or Cup or both, then third best. Uh, cover guy is not going to be able to keep up with Josh Reynolds. So Josh Reynolds probably could be a two somewhere else. He's a three in this offense with cups with a cup and woods. So you need help stash him. Um, and I guess I told you MVS, the only way I'm taking an MVS strictly for an insurance policy in case something happens to Devontae Adams. Uh, in most of your platforms, trade deadline has come and gone. Uh, I know I myself uh, in our league of record have no trade deadline because I wanted to try to make the deadline for week 13. However, I have sent out a uh, word that the trades will be closely monitored. I don't want any kind of lopsided trades. If you're a commissioner in your league and you're listening to this, hi, welcome. And I'm glad, you know, that you're tuning in. I uh, appreciate the love and support. If you haven't already and you're watching the show for the first time, down the bottom, subscribe, like, and share for me. Appreciate the support. Um, but I sent out word that I'm going to closely monitor all of the trades and all of the drop ads. Okay. So I don't want guys who are out of the running, who are giving up, I don't want any collusion within the league. Um, not that my guys would, but just to, as a, uh, a precursor to going into the playoffs and kind of, uh, you know, make sure it's said and understood that I will be monitoring and I, I'm not gonna, going to allow any collusion to taint the, uh, the playoff, playoff run for anyone who's going, going to be the champion. Um, so tight ends guys i know tight end is a really sore subject for a lot of people but here's what i want to do i'm going to show you guys all players and the top 10 specifically okay so 
We see Kelsey at one, Hawkinson at two. Well, I'll tell you what, let's go season long. Okay, so. Nope. Sorry, guys. Was the last four weeks. So, we see here top 10 Kelsey at one, Hawkinson at two, Gronkowski three, and then Waller four, Ebron five. Now we come down here to six, seven, and nine. These are all free agents. So, you see Evan Ingram. A lot of people have laid off the Evan Ingram, but in the last four weeks, he's put up, you know, decent numbers. He's averaged 10 points every week. You're telling me I can get 10 points out of my, out of my tight end with the way that this picture is gone? I'm all about it, okay? I don't have to because I have Travis Kelsey. So if you weren't fortunate enough to get someone who's not named Travis Kelsey on your lineup, then you're going to want to plug in Evan Ingram. OK, uh, Evan Ingram, we look at his rest of schedule. You see poor showing against Philly. We'll take him. We'll throw that one out. OK, guys. Um, but he had a bye this week. Prior to that, 10 points, 12 points, 15 points, week seven through nine. Get Cincinnati, Seattle, Arizona, Cleveland, and then Baltimore. So to get you into the playoffs, he's got to face two bad passing defenses. Okay, so if you're just looking for a tight end to get you over the hump, maybe you're missing Gronk this week or uh, week 13. <clears throat> Look at his week 13 matchup. Seattle is probably like the worst passing defense that you can face. So. You need somebody to plug in. He's there. Hayden Hurst averaging almost 10 points a game over the last four weeks. And we see he had the bye. He got shut out week 11 against New Orleans. But New Orleans is a good defense, okay, guys? And Matt Ryan played like crap. He was under pressure all the time. I think he had seven sacks in that game. <clears throat> so, but we looked before, we got from week six through week nine, 15, 12, 10, 13. Moving forward, he gets Vegas. Yes, he gets New Orleans. But after that, he has... The Chargers, so week 14, the first round, he can probably help get you through. Tampa Bay and KC is going to be a rough matchup. Um, but week tw uh, next week against Vegas, I think he can get you a little help there if you need a little push, if you're like just decimated with tight end, if you're not happy with it, somebody who can definitely help you out. Logan Thomas. Okay, Logan Thomas is definitely a guy. Not a lot of people are, are you know, high on him. They want to talk about him a lot, but they're not really willing to put themselves out there. Um, we look at his rest of the season schedule. He's got the Thanksgiving Day game against Dallas. Then he gets Pittsburgh. I'm not too, too thrilled about that one. But after that, San Fran, Seattle, and Carolina. So if you can get yourself into the playoffs, Maybe you need a little help again if you need if you don't have Gronk. Uh, maybe your tight end has a really rough matchup for week 12. Uh, you need to plug him in and then stash him uh, for weeks 14, 15, 16 for your championship run. So Logan Thomas, a guy that you can kind of plug in and not be extremely disappointed about. Uh, we see everybody else here, not a free agent. Gerald Everett, look, I'm not too thrilled with any of the uh, the tight ends from the Rams, Higby or Everett. One of them has to be out. So keep an eye and see if either one of them get hurt, 
make sure you pick up the other, okay? Um, tight end or um, defenses, we're gonna show you real quick. The Now, in my league of record, the Bills got dropped, KC got dropped, and the Giants are still out there. Now, the Giants are probably out there in your league as well. And the Giants have actually been playing decent defense of late. Okay. Now, next up to get Cincinnati. This game right here, if you need help, you, maybe you lost Tampa Bay's defense. Uh, maybe you were banking on Carolina. I don't know. But getting Cincinnati it, week 12 with a second-string quarterback is a dream matchup for fantasy football this late in the season. So if the Giants are, if you're trying to stream a defense this week, the Giants should be at the top of the list. Okay, guys? Now, I do also want to show you somebody who might not be on your radar, but definitely is probably available in your league, the Raiders. You know, like, well, why are you showing me the Raiders? The Raiders suck. I mean, look at look at what they've done. That's right. But against really a really bad Denver team, and they've stepped up a little bit. I know negative two points against Casey is not stepping up, but let's look at the rest of their schedule. They get Atlanta, the Jets, take knock out, leave out Indy, then they get the Chargers and Miami. Now, the Chargers are probably going to put up a lot of points. Miami, not so much, unless you get Ryan Fitzpatrick back. We saw Fitzpatrick come in for Tua, got pulled, he got knocked out in this game last week or this past week. Um, he got pulled. He has been named the starter moving forward by the head coach. So we're not really sure what's going on in Miami. Um, but week 13, if you need a good starting defense, the jet he they get the Jets. Okay. It's the Jets, guys. Okay. The Raiders shown that they can give fits to decent quarterbacks like Mahomes. Yes, they lost. Yes, they gave up a lot of points. But if you watch the game, it was a lot closer than the score. Should, the score should not have been that that high. Okay. The, the Raiders actually did play decent defense up until about the last two minutes. So somebody you might actually want to, uh, to keep on your radar there. All right, guys. So ran down the list of waivers for you. We talked about Thanksgiving Day. We got three games, six teams. Pay attention. Okay, guys. Remember, we're playing chestnut checkers. So we're looking three steps ahead when all of our opponents are just looking one. Now, maybe you need to just look for that one win. Here's the thing. I want you guys down, down the bottom in the comment section. If you made a trade going into this these last couple of weeks, I want to know what it is. Show me, show me what you did. Okay. I myself pulled up a trade for uh for Derrick Henry, gave up uh Henderson and Higgins. Uh, Higgins is now without a quarterback and Henderson is relegated to running back by committee. So I'm perfectly happy with that. I think I came out ahead. Um, also, my opponent did not take a look at the rest of season as we just did. He was looking very short term. I'm looking ahead. Uh, he has a very favorable matchup for the rest of season. Uh, you know, we talked about we showed you Corey Davis's rest of the schedule, same rest of the schedule for Derrick Henry. Okay. Um, but down the bottom, show me what you did, you know, and let me know uh, if you just want to show off, or if you want to ask if you had the best deal. Okay. And I'll give you my advice. So remember, if you need any help down the bottom, I'm always available. And you can find me on Twitter at fantasy Dean 20. If you need to ask me any questions about uh, playoffs, um, you know, your championship run, your playoff run, or if you just, you know, want to shoot me a question about, you know, if you should pick up a player or not, hit me up. I'm here for you guys. Until next time, when we go over uh, the rest, we'll do a, 
review of the League of Record, and we'll probably go over uh, a few more waiver wire pickups if uh, if any pop off. And uh, we'll go over some injury reports that are coming out of this weekend's games. Okay, guys. So till next time, this has been the Dean. This has been Fantasy Football Academy 2020. Take care of yourselves. Remember, mask up and be smart. If you're not feeling well, stay home.